Okay, hi everybody. Uh, how many people came to the presentation I did yesterday? Okay, a few. Cool. Thank you for coming. Um, how many Flash developers do you have in the room? Couple. Flex developers? Cool. Why are the rest of you here? <laughs> Curious. Anybody want to answer that? Interested. Interested. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you for coming very much. Um, this is going to be just a really sort of loose um, talk, just presenting some uh, three sort of some case studies, if you want to call it that. I'm just going to talk about um, some of the challenges that I faced while working on these projects, and I would appreciate it if um, something pops in your mind you want to hear, raise your hand and uh, we can kind of have a, have a discussion. That'd be great. Um, my name is Scott Nelson. I am a partner at This By Them, my company, with uh, two others. And um, yeah, so we're talking about Flash and Drupal, which is actually what led me to Drupal. Um, brief history, I went over this yesterday a little bit, but um, when I came to Drupal, I was doing, uh, my partner and I were doing funky Flash sites, you know, where um, things move around and sort of really um, sort of a creative experience. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to figure out how to do was to allow our clients to administer their content themselves. And so over I don't know, some time, I, I, I dabbled in developing my own uh, uh, administration interfaces, which were a pain in the ass to maintain. So I started looking for a CMS, and um, in about the summer of uh, 05, I believe it was. What happened? No. No, it's, yeah, you're right. I do need to plug in, but. Ooh, hello. Um, so, summer of 05. I found Drupal and I actually skipped over it because um, it was really, really ugly and we're a very uh, aesthetic oriented company. Um, so I started looking, you know, I looked at the other options and they were eh, maybe a little bit prettier but once I started, uh, you yeah, know, this is too high because it does that when I put my head down. I'm going to lower this. Apologies for the uh, thing right here. Um, there we go. So after dabbling in uh, some Joomla and some um, other things, I came back to Drupal and I, I, I looked under the hood. And I looked under the hood of, of Joomla as well. And, and uh, I don't know what else I looked at. But Drupal had the cleanest code structure out of, out of all of them. And I was really impressed by how everything sort of was laid out and worked. And so um, we chose Drupal. Um, and I also liked that it had a built-in uh, XML RPC library, um, which was one way that we could uh, pull data out of it and into Flash. And so, um, so at one point um, we had a project that fit the the requirement. Um, we wanted the client to be able to update their stuff. I don't remember which project. Do you remember which which one we actually first used Drupal on? We talked about Droge, but I don't think it. I think it might have been something like uh, Wickham. Was it Wickham? I think it was Wickham. I'm gonna pull this up. No, no, because he built it for Drudge. No, it was it was Wickham because we used. Uh... All right. That's not even up anymore. Shoot, sure, I can't show that. <laughs> it was a good site, but nothing's there. Um, so yeah, so it was a it was a site for an artist called Phil Wickham, um, who's a Christian artist. But the site was cool. Um, it interfaced with Drupal through XML RPC. Um, we pulled in things like tour dates and photos and uh, did like user registration or a sign up, a newsletter sign up with that. And then uh, we came across, or uh, uh, another artist came to us as a result of some of the work that Lance had done uh, before we started working together and wanted to do um, something cool and on Flash. Oh, that's the store. And so we started to, well, obviously it fit the model of, of him needing to be able to administer content himself so he didn't have to, to 
pay somebody to do it every time. Um, artist sites typically have a lot of uh, new content going up, you know, tour dates, photos, new tracks, etc. So, um, so we, we, we brainstormed and we came up with this sort of funky experience that I showed a little bit yesterday, but um, I'm going to show again. And it's just sort of, well, Lance, why don't you, why don't you talk just for a second about, come, come on up here. Lance was going to sort of join me on this session. Um, just, um, I don't know if any of these other mics are on. I asked him to turn it on. Just talk loud. No. Does this work? Hello. Hello. There we go. Cool. Okay. Um, the site that Pete had seen before was an artist site that was in Flash that I built um, and uh, coded badly, but it still worked because um, I'm not a code guy. Um, and Pete wanted something similar. He was really after an experience versus something like the MyPlay player, if you haven't shown that yet, which is just no. all about information and getting to that information to the artist, I'm sorry, to the end user really fast. So he came to us about um, <clears throat> kind of creating sort of a world a little bit. And this is the design that we came up with when Scott clicks in. You'll see that we can go through these different sections. Um, Pete is uh, really on top of his game. You'll see that, you know, over there, we just launched the store site, like, what, last week, yeah. I guess. He's now kind of done his own uh, label thing. He's integrate, integrated that store with, um, what was it called? And it was a download thing. Yeah, I'm not, really sure. I'm not sure. He really wanted, he's done lots of records. If you open up the jukebox, actually, that's where it really kind of gets crazy. You want to open the jukebox? Yep, I'm getting to it. What's oh, this one? Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm. I don't know how much you've done there. Open the jukebox. No. Oh. <laughs> that's counterintuitive. Yeah, that's great. Great user experience. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> so, yeah, we really tested the side a lot with different kinds of users and stuff. <laughs> You want. Uh, how many does he have in there? He just has them there right now. Well, he can add this all these different artists. He's worked on tons of records, so he can go back through the Drupal admin, add a new, add a new album. If um, I think we have it in, there's another section here. It's been a while since we built the site. Anyways, Pete's really great about like lots of information. I want to be able to like that first page that we went to, the home page. There's all those new things. He updates it a lot. He's really active in the site. He's really active in his information. So there's really no way to go about that. Like. This first site that I had built before Scott that Pete liked, I was using TA, you know, little text files that the that the that the uh, client kind of had to upload through FTP because that's all I didn't. I Which is really XML. fun to try and explain how to do. Yeah, it was really yeah, really hard and <laughs> even to XML and Flash. I still can't actually. Scott came around, came around, said, "Hey, we can use Drupal and put these two things together." Um, and not only build kind of a cool world with Flash, which you can really only do with Flash in this way, um, but we can also make it. Uh, so it has tons of information and really, really easy for a guy like Pete to take control of the content of his site. Um, and he was stoked. He was stoked with it. And we're really happy with it, too. I think it's one of the better things that we've done. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, there was a lot of love put into this project. Um, it was early, in, early on in our uh, uh, work relationship. And so uh, it was one of those things where we just, we're just going to make this kick ass, as we usually try to do. But... Um, we spent just a ton of time on this, way, way, way more than we got paid for, you know. Um, but, but at the end of it, I mean, it, we think it kicks ass, so we're happy. Um, let me just show you. Thanks, Lance. Um, this is Lance Troxel. Uh, does all the design stuff at, with this by them. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome. I love you too, man. Um, so, if you click on home, a little lower, he pops up in the corner. Um, oh, I guess we took the news feed out, that's right. Okay, clicking over, uh, discography. Loading. So, all these guys over here are Drupal nodes. Um, and if I log into the back end, you're just going to love the way the admin interface looks on this one. This is, uh, i got to do user login even, I don't have the fancy redirect thing. So this is running on Drupal 4.7. This was um, not actually running on services for those of you who are familiar with what services is, but this is where services was sort of born. 
um, discography. So this is, uh, what, what was this theme called? Anybody know that? Blue Marine. Blue Marine. Yeah, this was lovely Blue Marine days at Drupal. Um, but Pete can go in and click on any of these in the admin uh, after being logged in and edit and uh, change them. So when you click on these, it uh, pings a server, uh, loads the node data, and you know loads the image path and all that, and, and displays it into Flash. So the things, same thing, sort of, same thing goes on throughout the rest of the site. Jukebox does the same thing. These are all nodes. You can see it in the admin. Uh, what was that? Audio composer audio. I don't remember where that is. Oh, jukebox there it is. And I think this was using um, an early version of, uh, what was that? There was an audio module, actually. I don't know if it still exists, but it, um, you upload an audio file. It uh, gives you a play button that runs on uh, that uh, that open source Flash player. I forget what that one's called, too. Anybody know what that, you see, recognize that button? I think everybody who does Flash has used that player at some point. Anybody know? Jason, you gotta know. No? Um, yeah, anyways. So, everything here is um, pretty much just reading from the server, except for at the end there is a guestbook functionality, which was actually turned out a lot cooler than I think we expected because there was tons and tons of posts uh, which with really, really great feedback on the site that um, were instantly Visible. This is a bio. This is just pulling in a uh, page node. Um, okay, we got some character encoding issues, but it uh, Flash is able to display and, and format, you know, rudimentary HTML um, things like bold characters and uh, paragraph breaks and stuff. So we let Drupal uh, uh, run it through Drupal's content filter uh, system and convert it to HTML first, and then we display it in an HTML text box so we can get some uh, formatting there. There's nothing bold here, but you can see that the spacing is there. And I'll show you a little bit of the code uh, on the Drupal side that runs this. Everything else here, um, photographs is kind of neat. I'll show you that. So galleries were set up as, uh, let me see. I think those were set up in taxonomy. We did this project in uh, 2005, 6. Yeah, so I'm kind of re re revisiting some of this old stuff here. But um, uh, basically, there's two different data structures here uh, taxonomy, terms, and uh, photo nodes, you know, just a node that has a, a photo upload field. And so when you click on any of these galleries, it loads all the nodes that are within that gallery or taxonomy term and uh, flash code displays them on the page. And then going over to the guestbook functionality, let's see here. This is where we're actually sending information back to the server and saving it in Drupal. So Got quite a few pages. Oh, look, we need to add a, a double. Uh, we, went, we, went we went past the digits. Wow. Cool. It goes to 11. So, if I want to leave a message, I got the birds holding my little form here, which is awesome. Um, oh, yeah, if I roll over these birds, that's cool too. Hey. Um, Action script is fun. So, leave a message. Hey, Pete. Demoing your site. I send this. They take it to Drupal and uh, says thanks, and then it refreshes over here. And uh, so you, you can see that this probably. Do we have a administration area? Let's see, guestbook. Yeah. This is the better looking interface of that, so you can see it's right there. Did I type in Hey Pete is my name? I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I did. Um, so that 
um, actually works through AMF PHP. They, who knows what AMF PHP is? Anybody? Raise hands. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, um, AMF is actually a binary uh, messaging format that Adobe developed in-house. It was proprietary for a long time. They just recently open-sourced open the spec. Um, but what it is, is basically a, it's a bi binary format that uh, Flash has um, serializers and deserializers compiled right in that run on C code in the Flash player um, to interpret data structures that it pulls from external systems. So it's similar to something like SOAP or XML RPC, but it's really only used for Flash and Flex applications. And the reason that we wanted to use it on this site was because I just wanted to use it. <laughs> um, they're really, it does affect things like um, performance of the of the uh, the Flash or Flex app. Um, if you're loading in a lot of XML and, it's, and the player's having to process that XML, they can slow things down. I mean, we kind of have a lot of animations going on here. So it was about, you know, keeping things light and lean, but also it was just um, cool. It was fun to do. And, uh, and obviously later on, uh, it progressed into things much cooler with the services module, which I'll talk about when I show one of these other sites. Um, so just to, to briefly check out, well, at this point, does anybody have any questions with the interface? Um, curious how we did anything. I don't know if I'd... Any special module for, for Flash? Is there any special module? Yeah, um, let me just, her question was, is, is there any special module for, for the Flash that you see here? Um, there's a couple different modules that, and maybe you guys want to throw out a couple more names after I do, um, that help you work with Flash in Drupal. Um, there's FWF tools, which I believe helps you embed uh, Flash. I haven't really used it, so has anybody used SWF tools? I was talking to somebody about it earlier, and uh, I thought he meant the, the, the command line package, which is totally not part of Drupal, so I spent like two minutes talking, and he's like, no, I meant this. Um, what does SWF tools do? You know, it basically gives you an input filter, so you can just right. SWF from the file name, and it'll grab that from your file. Right. Does it do anything else? It's just one tool? Uh, well, no, you can also use the SWF tools for like doing a one pixel out player, uh, things like that for uh, video, things like that. Yeah, okay. And then there's um, there's the FLV video or Flash video module, which um, will actually encode uploaded videos of any type um, into the FLV format and show it in a in a Flash player. Uh, and then there's oh, so then there's the uh, services module, which I developed um, doing work like this and the AMF PHP module, which plugs into services as a server. Um, I guess I should, I, I'm just going to give you a, a quick explanation of what the server, services module is. I had a full presentation on it yesterday, but basically the idea of a, of a service is like a web service. So if you are familiar with anything like SOAP or XML RPC, you're just talking about a way to be able to, to transfer data between two systems. So something like uh, like what SOAP does or XML RPC does is you can send uh, a piece of data, be it an object or an array or whatever, uh, an integer over the wire to another type of system. Let's say on one end you got PHP and on the other end you got Java, and it'll uh, serialize that object into like some sort of string, send it over the wire uh, through HTTP. And on the other end, using a, a, a client interface for XML RPC or SOAP or whatever, it'll deserialize that into a native object type. So if you send an array from PHP, it'll end up as an array in Java or Ruby or Python, C++ or Objective C or whatever. Um, so with services, I wanted to, to create. Uh, an internal API for Drupal that's standardized um, the idea of getting data out of Drupal. And what this API allows you to do is, is um, 
define the names of mes methods that you can access via SOAP or XMLRPC or any ser uh, services, service server protocol, um, and point them to Drupal functions internal. And with those functions, you have access to the entire Drupal API, uh, like you do um, whenever you're coding a Drupal hook. And so you can basically spit out with that function any kind of data that you can you can find in Drupal and send it over the wire. So it basically allows you to um, expose your Drupal site to external applications. The reason that I went the services route was because I wanted to create something that didn't solve just my problem, but opened up the possibility of solving other people's problems. Um, my problem was that I wanted to get data out of Drupal and into Flash, but there's so many other applications um, for this sort of concept. There's iPhones, there's maybe somebody just wants to run Drupal as a back end and has a Java front end, they want to get data out of there and they put it in their Java site. Um, so I took what I had done on this, which in Drupal 4.7 became the AMF PHP server, or AMF PHP module, which depended on the AMF PHP library, which is external from Drupal. It was a, um, I talked about AMF uh, earlier. AMF was proprietary for a long time, and at one point somebody said, this sucks, I don't want to use Cold Fusion. I want to use PHP. The guy happened to be smart enough to reverse engineer the AMF uh, spec format and created um, a library for PHP that allowed you to, to use AMF uh, without having to run Cold Fusion or Java, whatever it depended on at the time. So the AMF PHP module for 4.7 required the AMF PHP library. When it went to the Drupal 5 version, uh, it actually depended on the AMF PHP library, but also the services module, and became a plugin for services as a as a server. Um, so, if you're wanting to use something like uh, AMF for your Flash uh, applications, which gives you um, with services gives you uh, access to common operations like getting node data out or getting a list of um, nodes that come from a view out of Drupal, or logging in a user to Drupal, or saving a user record to Drupal, registration, um, then Drupal plus AMF PHP is a, is a good way to go for that. Um, so that was a long answer to your question, but that's just a general overview of, of what modules are available for, uh, for integrating Flash and Flex and, and Drupal. Um, aside from that, there wasn't anything, you know, this, this site that you're seeing right now is a, is a standalone Flash site that communicates with the standard uh, uh, internal Flash uh, AMF tools or uh, libraries uh, with the Drupal site. So the AMF PHP module provides a, a URL callback which um, acts as a, as a gateway to the, the AMF server and it communicates through standard uh, practices for so I could plug this into another site that might not be Drupal as long as it exposes the same uh, method names over in that. It's probably totally confusing. Anybody have any questions? Did I raise more? No? AMF AMF. Yeah. AMF PHP. It is a module that now depends on the services module, but it's also uh, an external library for Flash that you can use uh, with PHP for things other than Drupal. No, you have to you have to also download the AMF PHP module. No, it's it's on the Drupal. Yeah. So her question was, if she installs services, does it come with AMF PHP? The answer is no. Um, AMF PHP is actually outside of the services package. So if you want to use AMF PHP you have to go and download that after you download the services. Um, yes? So you would install the AMF PHP module, the services module, and then what would, how would you use those, are those modules easy to use? Yeah, um, well I guess, yeah, this is a loose session, so let me just show you how 
you know what? Let me get to that because I want to. That wasn't used on this site, so let me show you the next um, demo, and then I'll, I'll answer that for you because I'll show how it works in the back end. Anybody have any more questions about this site? Yes. Yeah, it does the same thing. Um, it actually came uh, after AMF PHP. And since, uh, since Adobe open sourced their spec, um, released it finally, uh, there's a lot more libraries that have popped up that solve the same problem. So AMF is, is a standard Flash thing. It's not specific to Drupal or whatever. It's a standard Flash binary format for communicating with other services. So there's libraries in Ruby, Python, Java, who else had a question? Yeah. Um, with, the, with the jukebox, now uh, the images for the, for the album art are, I didn't see a place on, on the Drupal side of the Drupal admin where, where they add that. Is that being pulled? Or is he adding that? Or is that being pulled directly right from the file system? Or? These images right here? Right. And when you open the jukebox, you look at the It might be related to an album node. Let me. Take a look at that jukebox. The question was on the jukebox node, which was on the Drudge site, where is the album image coming from? Revisiting all of code. Um, Playlist. Yeah, I don't, you know what? I honestly don't remember it. So, what did you say what we did? I think you put in images mm -hmm. and then upload images, and then you can attribute that, <coughs> that image to an album that you're on. You put on images, that's probably what sort of complicated way to get around that. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of started solving these problems um, better uh, as we did more projects. Um, I'm not sure how we did it on this, but how we would do it today, probably, is we would relate a playlist track, which would contain the auto file, to a, an album node, or a playlist track node to an album node, which would be two separate nodes through a views, or sorry, CCK node reference field. You, are you familiar with yeah. that? Yeah, I just so here, you would add a CCK node reference field, and on this form it would show a select box that has a list of albums, you would choose which album it goes to. And then the album node would have an image field for uh, for its, its album art. You had a question? Back. Yeah, you. Uh, On sure. Is there, anyone, uh, is there any way to use uh, service module as a data source for view? Services module as a data source for view? Yeah. You mean like as a, as a views display yeah. plugin? Well, because services doesn't have any data, it's it's a way of ex of, of exposing data. So, okay, let me try and yeah. Re um, so the question was: Is there a way to provide services data to use? Like as a client, yeah, that's something I talked about a little bit yesterday. Services is not it's not a client. It's only for exposing Drupal out of your data site for other, other things to pull in. External applications, Flash, Flex, iPhone, whatever. So when you talk about pulling data in from other sites and you're looking at something, I think we talked about yesterday, um, somebody said the feed API allows you to do that. Um, pull in feeds and, and convert them into Drupal nodes. Yeah? I'm curious how you handle um, if somebody tried to type in node slash 270, does that go to that node in the Flash movie or? No, not on the site. What it does is it actually redirects you to the home page and just fires up. If you're not logged into the site and you visit any URL other than user login in the home page, it will uh, redirect you to the home page. And it does that, um, I think I just did that with some template code. Just checked if it was front page and if not, Front page or user login, and if not, redirect. Yeah. Any more questions? Cool. So um, the next thing I'm going to show is the MyPlay audio player.
And Lance, it would be cool again if you could just um, maybe talk a little bit about the project and, you know, how, from a design standpoint, how we came up with it. You want to do that? Um, well, it's a simple process for a process that pretty much every other website that we do now uh, and did then. The process was, um, like, if it was a normal website, which it's not, but um, wireframed it out, made sure our functionality was making sense, that we had all the stuff in there that they wanted, um, placement for, um, <clears throat> nice, what did you choose? This is my favorite. I don't know. I think it's funny. <laughs> nice. um, placement of all the elements, and then went back and forth with Sony, making sure that they had oh, my recommendations to have this jacked again. Sorry, small time details. Because um, <clears throat> Arnold's name is just too long. Um, <clears throat> back and forth, and then once we agreed on the wireframe, um, I started to design the interface, and then Scott started building, because obviously it was a big project, and he did this all himself, since I don't code, really. Um, <clears throat> we had, you know, my play has a certain look to it. Um, I can't say that had we given free reign, this is necessarily what we would have kind of come up with, um, but we wanted it to inter um, uh, work well within the site and be you know, kind of still a visual cue that, oh, we're still on the same spot. One of the things that we did do, and I don't know if we can find one, is allow <coughs> uh, Sony to be able to customize the player. So they have, um, they can choose, this, you'll see that we've got the purple there, which matches the purple on their site. Um, they can go through and they can change that one highlight color. Um, and as well as take the, all the background and put a JPEG behind it. So, and they're doing this actually, if you love Britney's site, okay. and then look up the See that part, if that's important to you guys. Um, what is it, Brittany? Brittany.com. Okay. I'm sure they did it there. BS Weekly. Love that. They'll listen now in the right corner there. Can we type? Did they do it? Please tell they did. And, well, they did it one time. Okay, well, then we're here for Britney Spears. Either way, so, um, but they, they, can brand, they can brand the player. Uh, they wanted that. Actually, that was a flexibility we just sort of suggested that they really got it. Um, and then the rest of it's sort of, you know, I, I, your kind of good old UI. We can, we can bring the player back. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Are there any questions about the UI? No, it's pretty straightforward. You know, make little buttons. The way that we did it was, uh, Scott will explain that we're using Flex. Um, we had one kind of flash. Um, file that holds all the buttons. That's what I worked in. So he would sort of kind of create a mock button, and then I would go through and try to uh, get it as right as I could. Um, and so all those elements are pulled from one flash file. Um, and uh, just yeah, I think that's it. Cool. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Any? Yes. Do you what tool do you? Uh, we did the original comps and. and and I mean, in terms of the skin, the original comps and, and Photoshop, and then a lot of those I was exporting out into Flash, and then some of the buttons creation I did in Flash, um, and then he'll probably talk about yeah. at least the back end part. <coughs> cool. Okay. Thanks, Lance. Yep. Um, okay, so just backing up for just a second, the major requirement of this player was that Sony had, and I, I don't know the numbers exactly, but it was something like 16,000 tracks that they wanted to, to be able to let their uh, uh, users browse through in this one one player. So it had to be really snappy and, and fast, and the, the data transfer had to be quick and lean. Um, but this is actually a Flex uh, uh, application. So it was developed in Flex using the Flex Builder. And uh, yeah, does that answer your question? You have a question? Okay, so so there was a yeah. So um, how do you do, play, make Drupal play the music? Sony had already had my play up. It was already launched. Most of the tracks were already in the system. They used a service called the Platform. I think it was called where. The audio files are um, actually FLV uh, movies, 
and they're hosted on the platform and streamed through uh, Flash's media streaming server um, technology. So when they add a track in, the, in their admin, um, they just paste in the URL that, that the platform gives them that points them to that, that file, which is hosted there. And so the reason why the player, um, well, we use, they, they wanted to use streaming, one, because it's, uh, it's more secure than just a straight download, because downloads get cached to the user's browser cache. And so, you know, obviously there's DRM issues and things like that. But um, also, it's a lot faster to start. So, um, how do you get the music? To, how do you get Drupal to play the music? Right? You build a Flash application to play a file. It's, it, there's there's a couple um, modules that we talked about earlier. Um, the audio module. I don't know if it's still in development or not. But it it what it did at the time was provide a little a little button. Um, you upload a file, an MP3, um, to Drupal, and you get a little button that just you click to play. That would probably be the easiest uh, way to play music with Drupal. Yeah. But so is there a group of them in here? Yeah. So they create these um, playlists through Drupal? Yeah, and I guess the reason I'm not really diving into that too huge is because we didn't do any of the Drupal backend on this. We just interfaced with their existing backend. Um, so every yes, there is myplay.com is built on Drupal. It is. Yes, yes. Um, Sony is very, very Sony BMG. Sorry, is very heavily invested in Drupal. They use it for everything, pretty much. Um, all their artist sites. I don't know how many, but um, all their artist sites. Myplay.com. They hire um, some of the, the top Drupal developers in the community. Um, a lot of views was developed at Sony. Uh, with uh, Merlin uh, working there. And uh, so, yes, to answer your question, this is, this is Drupal. It uses the services module. It uses the AMF PHP module. Um, one thing that it also does is, is I didn't... We wanted the, the, the player to snap up really fast. So when somebody clicks this link right here and the player's launched, they wanted it to start playing within a few seconds. Um, at most. So making calls, service calls to Drupal is really expensive because it has to load all the Drupal code and go through the entire Drupal uh, you know, bootstrap process. And there's kind of a lot of stuff there, especially on a site that's big. So what we did actually is go back to the, the simplest method of getting data out of Drupal, which is just writing straight um, XML to, to the output. Um, and you can do that through um, a menu hook calling a, a function. Has anybody ever coded a module? Who's coded modules? Yeah, not enough people. Um, we're running a little low on time, so it's going to be hard to sort of explain how that works. So what did you yeah, what, what we did actually is, is I just um, created a, 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 a basic page in Drupal that output XML and nothing else. And so all the track lists, all the track data, anything that, that is just read from the server is done over XML. And when the first time that it hits that XML file, it, um, it runs through Drupal. Drupal generates the XML. And at the very end, right before it spits out the, the, the XML data, it writes it to the file system in the files directory, actually. And so on the next request, it bypasses Drupal altogether and just reads that XML file straight from the file system. So it happens like that. Are you Drupal. Closed, or did you? No, I had to, I wrote some custom code to do that. Um, and actually, it was based on their previous audio player, which they were doing something similar. And then for things like um, logging in, things that I need to do where I'm sending data back to Drupal, uh, I use services in AMF PHP. Now this is all coming off of their server, right? Right now. This is this is live myplay.com, yeah. Yeah, but what I'm saying is whenever we do this, it's coming off of whatever server you're you're hosted on, right? Yeah. Or is it going to the cloud or an Amazon.com Um I'm I'm a little confused at the question. I mean basically the, the, the flex right here is talking straight to the Drupal site. 
the Drupal site can be hosted on the cloud or Amazon or, or wherever it's hosted, but however it's hosted, you're still running Drupal, you're running PHP code, it's, it's, it's um, yeah. Does that make sense? What was the question? Well, Flex has, the reason we chose to use Flex is because the design of the site was pretty um, consistent with, with some of Flex's default UI. So Flex has, Flex is basically a framework built on top of ActionScript. And ActionScript is the scripting language that um, you write code for Flash in. So Flex contains all these, sort of, these components that are built with ActionScript that um, do certain things. Some of them are just non-visual and do processing. Or... So, so that is not actually the default? No, this, is, this, this entire thing right here is, is, is Flash um, built on Flex, built using Flex. So all these, yeah, all this stuff. So what are you, so how do you something that's going to, uh, Yeah. Um, let me show, and you were asking about how services, let me show you what it looks like in the back end. Uh, I had a services. You're doing service calls using the services and AMF PHP modules. Um, and you can, there is authentication. Let me just pull it up for you, I'll show you. So once you install the services module, you get this services menu item under site building. And it gives you a browser where you can test all the methods that you've uh, written for services. Um, example is getting a node, node.get, similar to node load. So you pass in uh, node ID, I have one in there. And optional fields, which strips down the data that you get return. I can just do title and oh, I'm back. Title body no space. So these are parameters that you would send over XML RPC or SOAP or whatever AMF, and uh, you get just the title and body back of node ID one. Um, to submit a form, this is a read function, something, a write function or a, a submit function would be something that's not here. Oh, one thing that I did in my session yesterday was show you how to write a service method. I wrote a little hello world uh, method. I got, I'm going to turn off authentication. For security, services has a, a key based uh, authentication and you can pass session IDs for uh, scripts that aren't run in the browser, um, command line scripts or completely separate applications that, were, that don't use cookies to store their own uh, sessions. I'm just going to check both of these off for demonstration purposes. So in my hello.say I'm actually going to send some sort of string. This is going to be sent to Drupal and Drupal is going to send it right back to me. So, going back to the original question, you said, how do you submit a form to Drupal? You use the service, so for this login example, um, basically you're sending the username and the password to Drupal through a service call. Um, it's a user.login is the name of the method once you enable the user service. And the inter yeah, um, services routes the service call to a Drupal or to a PHP function in Drupal, which inside of that function it um, submits the user login form through Drupal execute. Uh, I can let me see if I can. Yeah, so you so the the whole UI is built in in Flex, but once you hit submit or you log in. Uh, well, actually, it's doing validation. So, you once you fill that out and you hit submit, it hits Drupal with the username and password and sends back either a success response or a, or an error response if the login failed. And if you register, it's the same thing. Um, Scott, yes. Just a suggestion. It's really helpful if you like use the uh, the Mac console app and then load that so it actually shows the request to services and then. Mac console. For 
Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, so he said it'd be easier to show what's happening when services is being called with a with a, an app called Mac Console. It's just called it's one of the default apps in uh, utilities on the Mac called Console, and it lets you read any blocks that are so to to show the flash log. You're saying either the flash or the actual uh, server log, so they can see the request hitting the actual right. URL. Uh, right. Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. So. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we're, we're, what was the question? You're going to have to say that again. Yeah, it, it would work if I was showing a, a demo of my local machine, um, because I would have access to the log files, but like for this, I wouldn't have access to the log files even. Um, but basically... To, to, sh to explain what would happen if you're reviewing the, HD, the, the Apache log file, say. Um, you would fill this out, hit create account, you would see a log entry for, uh, I believe it would be slash services slash gateway for your, for your site. Um, basically, it's a post request that contains all the, the, the data for AMF PHP, which AMF PHP then processes. Um, did you have a question? Yeah, so you're saying like a, a pop-up login widget. There are modules. Does anybody know what, what those are called? Um, yeah, there's like a modal there's login. There's like a fancy login module, but it's not. Well, you don't you don't want to use Flash or Flex unless there's a a good reason, you know. Not you don't want to use it just for visual purposes unless you're doing a completely like artistic, creative site. But to do use it for just something like a form. To see how it works. Yeah, actually, if um, you know, obviously, if you want to pursue this and you have uh, a reason to uh, want to learn how to do this, maybe you have a project that is going to require something like this in the future. Um, there is documentation. If you go to services or Drupal.org slash project slash services, um, there's a link to the services handbook where you can view all documentation. And there's some there's some screencasts, actually, that explain how to do this with uh, Flex that I've done uh, before. Um, they're probably a little bit dated now on older versions, but um, it gives you the basics on how to do this. I'm getting close on time. Anybody have any more questions about this site? Yeah. Well, not this site in particular, but it looks like uh, the George the George uh, site was produced uh, quite differently than this one. Yeah. Uh, when he uploads a new audio track, is he, is he doing that to a streaming server as well, and then grabbing um, whatever the XML is or whatever that the output is, and then putting it into a field in Drupal to spit it out to Flash? No. Um, Either we would have given him an FTP site where he can upload and just paste in the name of the file at that time, or we would have given him a, like a file field where he could have uploaded. I'm not sure what we ended up, what we did at the time, but um, it would have just been a straight MP3 and not streaming because those services cost money and, you know, um, he didn't really care about people being smart enough to go and download the, the MP3 file so much. Uh, Uploaded a straight MP3 file, yeah, and Flash pulled it in because Flash can do that and uh, and play it. Yeah. yeah. Does the um, AMF PHP that um, service that's out there when you call that is it still as expensive uh, like bringing up whole bootstrap for the for the boot and everything else, or is it the same as you're using it for these guys for the, the menu? Um, it's similar. Yeah, I mean, you know. One of the things about Drupal is it's 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 really great. I mean, there's a lot of functionality you get out of the box, but it's really really database uh, chatty, you know. So there's a lot of database stuff going on, and especially when you have a, a high traffic site like this. Um, if everything's dynamic, which um, a service call is, uh, things can get really sluggish. Um, you're loading in all the code. You know, the codes are doing their own init hooks, whatever. Um, all the stuff is happening when you're making a service call. 
So what Drupal does, in, in this site does, is you know uses things like Boost or Drupal Core's caching to cache pages and just shoot out a string of the page. So it's doing much less database hits or no database hits in the case case of Boost and serving the page statically. Um, does that answer your question? Sure. The question was I don't think I um, repeated it. Sorry. Um, was is a service call as expensive as doing the hook menu XML call? Yeah, it's about the same. The service itself doesn't have a whole lot of overhead. Um, I would say services is a little bit more expensive, especially since if you're doing AMF PHP or so, you have to deserialize and there's stuff that happens with that data. So it'd be a little bit more expensive. Um, but the difference between a dynamic XML generation call in a, in a services call is not that much. It's just the fact that we're, we're only doing that dynamic XML call once, and then it's, that's getting cached and we're bypassing it, successive requests. Yeah, and then um, they can, whenever they uh, edit node data, there's a, a node hook that actually clears that cache. So like when the data changes, the cache is cleared, it's generated again on the next request. Kind of thing. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, um, it's five o'clock. Is who's presenting next? Are they here? Who is? Jason. Oh, he's here. Where'd he go? He's hiding. Okay. Well, when he comes in, I'll stop. But um, I'll keep talking. Um, is there any more questions about this particular project? I got one more I can show until uh, I get kicked off. Available, available for what? To the public? Yes, this is a live, I'm actually viewing this on the live site right now. Um, this is publicly. No, this is not a, this is, this is specific to Sony. Here comes Jason. Um, yeah, this is a, this was developed for Sony. They use it on, on their, their MyPlace site. Yes. I haven't yet. Um, I just haven't had a need to. I haven't had the project. But uh, the question was, have I used Drupal with Air? And Air is a way to take Flex and put it on the desktop in a standalone type app situation um, versus serving it over a web page. Yeah. Everybody else good? The, the last site I was... Sorry? Yeah. Mm-hmm. My play player is built with Flex Builder. The last site I was going to show is called uh, www.digitaldollhouse.com. Um, I don't have any time to talk about it, but you can take a look. It uses the same sort of technologies. Um, it was built on Flex, and it's kind of like a, a online toy or game, more like a toy though. Um, so if you want to check that out, go ahead and, and uh, do that. But uh, uh, I wrote the code. We didn't design it or. Uh, or do anything other than build it out. Yeah. What's that? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely a lot going on. It took a lot of time to to make that work, but um, yeah, it's cool. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. That's uh, all we got. Did you stop your stop your? Um, I'm looking for it. Hit stop.